Hello everyone. Welcome to Art Town podcast series or ATPS as we like to call it. Every week on Friday we feature art and design professionals who take us through their journey in this fascinating world of art. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Spotify and with that let's continue with the show and dive deep into the ocean of art. Today we have with us the managing director of Food in India Anas Rehman Junaid Puran Report Incorporation was established as a research unit in 1999 and now it has grown into a leading luxury publishing group based in Oxford UK taking a close look at the Indian art market the Huran Research Institute also releases the Huran India Art List in association with artprice.com It is a list of top 50 living Indian artists ranked by the sale of their work sold at public auction annually. Let's move to the conversation which will definitely give you a deep insight on the attributes of art market in India. So how are you sir? How is the covid situation treating you? Yeah, so personally it's been a it's quite been quite a surreal experience so my so one of my one of the activities that i do is i speak to the entrepreneurs in the uh the uh, the rich list and uh, the feedback that i've been getting is you know they're all uh, waiting and watching in terms of how things are going to unfold and you know and uh, yeah and waiting to see what will uh, what will happen so yeah i've seen a past expected a very tricky situation yeah but then uh, yeah so that that's how it is so uh, the pandemic situation as we all know has been affecting the market in many ways but uh, yeah. what do you think and how do you think this is going to affect the art market and what kind of a change is expected in demand of art in pre covid 19 and post covid 19 situation it's mm-hmm. uh, very minuscule compared to that of china and the us right uh, in terms of collectors market as well Uh, I think we are possibly the number ten in the world or something, and no, uh, we don't even have a, a respectable uh, percentage, uh, single digit percentage in terms of market share of uh, art uh, being bought by Indian collectors. For your audience understanding, so every year uh, we uh, try and uh, just collect. So, so what we do basically is we do uh, something called India Rich List, which is basically the uh, the list of uh, uh, around thousand individuals who have created wealth transparently. So the next step, what we do is we do something called the women uh, rich list, which is to track, talk about the women entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Then further extend to that, we speak about the philanthropy side of entrepreneurs through the whole uh, philanthropy list. And then the next thing that we always want, to, we which we have done successfully in other countries, and which we want to do in India is to promote Indian artists. This is a, look, this is an amazingly powerful network, right? Mm-hmm. Which is basically the list of uh, top 50 artists alive in India. uh by value of their works being sold in the auction house so this year we did the second edition of the artlist and uh, anish kapoor continues to be the number one on the list if you compare to that of india uh, uh, compared to indian art to the rest of the world i mean we are a 5000 year old uh, uh, more than 5000 year old uh, civilization uh, india right and i mean there is so much of history and culture that we indians can boast about compared to the rest of the economies in the world right uh, so in so art definitely is one factor that has connected us from right through the centuries uh, and uh, and art has to be and and, and because of which art is automatically there uh, a taste for art is automatically uh their indian blood that's definitely there because of the size of the civilization the the value of the art is very very high but in indian context uh, we are still uh, uh, we still have miles to catch up or uh, to reach a respectable price for our artists so this pandemic will further create a problem already the artists really getting a sense that the uh, the pandemic could have a uh, negative impact uh, to the already uh, already small art market for india so Yeah, I must say that Huran is uh, actually taking a really nice initiative for all the Indian artists out there. But uh, one yeah. thing that I'm wondering is why is the market in India so low? Because even after having such a beautiful cultural diversity and you know uh, 
very beautiful art forms in india why is the uh, art market not as developed as other countries like western countries and china yeah so so just to give you a comparison right so mm-hmm. so before we launched for an art list in uh, china uh, the collectors even the the collectors they were not fully aware of the the artists there right mm-hmm. so the uh, 10 years later so, so, so i think there's 11 to 12 year term for the china art list right and uh, now most of them are collecting from the art list so similarly i think the primary uh, point of awareness you know mm-hmm. uh, indian india is looked at as a young country you know we are for uh, uh, civilization is pretty huge as we but the north country is a very young country you know we have got independent 1947 and you know you can do the math in terms of number of years uh so that would mean that our economy is also comparatively uh, uh the high value art is sometimes a proportion rate of how uh, uh wealthy the country is you know because the country is wealthy uh, the entrepreneurs or the businesses behind it has to be doing really well and if the businesses have to be doing really well, say awareness is the biggest reason why indian art is still uh, relatively lower Uh, the power value thing in order to be relatively lower than the rest of the countries. Uh, so it will take some time. Even I've spoken to entrepreneurs, and what they sometimes say is, "Look, Indian art is more of uh, you know, uh, the art is more alive and more revolutionary. Do they do a lot of revolutionary kind of work? We need something more uh, subtle and peaceful and all that stuff." So it's all wrong perceptions, right? They they haven't really seen it. So what we have, uh, I think that is the main thing. You know, then there is a lot of other things, the regulations and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into that. but the primary the most important point is not having a uh, uh, the culture and awareness of the uh, artist generally i mean we have to pass the message across and looking that you know any of these artists are going to be much more valuable 10 years from now i mean that message has to be uh, sent across that's that's for sure uh, so that is one thing. what according to you makes an art valuable like what kind of parameters in an art make them sell at a very high price yeah it's a very uh, interesting question so i'm 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 only a budding collector so i can't mm-hmm. really a full give you a full uh, result on uh, full uh, dump on what va- how do you value art and so on uh, but then going by what i've seen it, it ranges from uh, the the pedigree of the artist how long has the artist been spending time on and the rarity of pieces right that's a very very important thing to note about for example in our horror uh, uh, india artist ramesha druka his paintings he comes number 2 in the list if i'm not wrong right mm-hmm. uh, now if you look at the why why is this uh, price really high for his work right uh, yeah. because, that's because his work he literally hadn't uh, come out with any new work recently okay mm. and this set of work was all of a sudden gotten out you know then came to the auction house that is why it set such a high price so so that is a very very important aspect you know your uh, availability of a piece and, uh, and and if you look at the bruta story itself you know that uh, all of a sudden a few years which bruta paintings were not available and all of a sudden comes in a auction house come on it's like a discover, discovering a gold mine everybody will flock into it and buy, you know would love to get a piece of it because we don't know when he's going to do his next work right or okay. next work so so that has a very impact on the pricing so of course you have to of course have a pedigree in terms of the artist and you know how you build your reputation pay off and you know that could be done through very good galleries and so on and once you have a pedigree i think it's a function of availability of a work if i am an artist and you know very respected if my art work is less available that means you know uh, if i if any of my paintings or work gets auction i'll set a much higher price than something you know some of the artists have got lot of available work so mm-hmm. i think uh, these two are the main things okay that was pretty insightful and uh, as you mentioned in the previous answer that even you are uh, you collect art right so uh, yeah. do you have any such a experience which you can share with us where Uh, a certain art piece has a very unique story to itself, and uh, that's why it just sold at a really high price. Yeah, so I, I I'm not like a 
big collector, right? Collect uh, my, my collection uh, per piece ranges from one lakh to two lakh. You know that uh, it's a smaller range, you know, in terms of ticket. Uh, but then what I try to look at is I try to look at young, young artists uh, or upcoming artists uh, who've got certain depth to the painting, and uh, then I interact with them. If I like his or her idea, then I collect it. That's how I do it. So I've got one from one uh, gentleman called Abid Sheikh in Bombay, and I collected when I went to Vietnam. I met an artist there, and you know, I went to his gallery and bought a few paintings from it. So uh, I'm I'm collecting slowly. You know, I'm not I'm not I haven't reached an aggressive level. Uh, yeah, but then I yeah, that's the kind of uh, work I look at. I I look for inspirational art in the sense that even abstract would also do well. But I really would like to look at an art and get inspired in terms of what I do and you know uh, what I'll do in the future. So that's what I that's that's my more of a when I collect an art. Could you guide us yeah. through the critical procedure that is being involved in such kind of auctions and what kind of risk factor is assigned with uh, uh, these things? auctions? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll, I can give you a, a real life example. You know, I went with one of the Indian billionaires. Uh, mm -hmm. For an auction in uh, Christie's or Sotheby, I think it's Christie's, uh, Christie's in London. Okay, so mm -hmm. so there was a, a Picasso being auctioned, and you know this on this billionaire, uh, he wanted to buy a Picasso. Okay, uh, so I went with I went with him. You know he was bidding for the painting and so on. It went up to uh, 15 million uh, pounds, uh, but then eventually uh, it hit a price and you know. Uh, you cannot take it. So just to guide you through the process, you first, uh, as somebody who was in the uh, the buy the buy side, I'll go with the individual uh, to the auction house, and you get to see these magnificent uh, paintings of the masters displayed on the wall. Uh, then you uh, all the general bidders, they all sit on the you know they all sit sit there, and you know I'm looking at the auctioneer. And on the right and the left, you've got, you know, a bunch, if you, as you can imagine, there'll be a bunch of telephones, right? On the right side and the left side. So like the telephones are basically uh, where the agents of super rich billionaire people or whoever, uh, they would be on the telephone. And they'd be talking to the, uh, talking to their family office or the entrepreneur themselves, and they'd be making the live bidding, getting a feedback from the, uh, 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 the prospective buyer. So it's a very interesting uh, process. They start bidding and then, Telephone calls happen parallelly. It's like a massive uh, bidding process, and then you know uh, the people who are on the floor. They raise their stick, and you know, others they just keep on uh, calling their uh, buyers. So that happens. So that's how a typical auction price. Uh, that's how it takes place. And the risk factors, as I was stepping out, uh, there was this amazing. Uh, there was this lady who just came to us and said, "Look, I've got some uh, color private collection which I would like to show you." And the so this spoke to us very smoothly, and you know. Uh, it was very sweet, and then uh, you know, there's an amazing private collection we'd like to show you and you know, like to buy and stuff. Now, that would, from what I understand from the, the billionaire friend of mine, what he was telling me was that, that could potentially be a fraud and we should award and scale with some such people. So, it's a mix and match. You know, you get to uh, the, the auction house is anyway uh, supremely regulated. You can't really do much about it, but I'm sure there'll be elements around the auction house who definitely want to uh, get a piece of your, you know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, money, I guess. That could be some of the risk. The process sounds really interesting and I would love to be a part of something like that. One more thing is that you must have seen many emerging in entrepreneurs and artists in your life. So, uh, like, what makes an artist unique? And what gives them the... What makes... The, what differentiates them from the others? Because there are many artists out there, but very few actually reach that level when they can actually top the artist list and I, I, I don't think there's much of a uh, I, it's quite obvious you know every artist have a, a separate uh, unique colors that they use I mean if you see mm -hmm. a Parish you would definitely realize that that work is a better Parish when you mm -hmm. see an Anish Kapoor it's quite recognizable it's better Parish Kapoor so every Artists, MS society, you see it now. You know it's an MS society work, right? Mm -hmm. so every uh, successful artist I've seen has found, got some traditional uh, kind of touch to whatever, or they're, they're not traditional, a very unique touch to whatever work they do. 
so it could be to the colors, the materials they use, the canvas, uh, the packaging, the frames, you know, the whole bunch of things define the work. The team, the team is important. Some artists who paint on, uh, uh, you know, lilies, really, you know, there could be a piece of that. Uh, so someone like me, I'm still not like a big collector or something, but then somebody who's like a very serious collector, <clears throat> I'm sure you can look at an art, artwork and, you know, see if it's that of a very popular artist. When I checked the Huron India art list, I noticed that the kind of art that was uh, leading the list was contemporary kind of art. So what makes contemporary art lead the list and uh, what gives contemporary art the edge over surrealism or the modernist art? You probably uh, start with contemporary and you know, in terms of collections, then you move to the next phase. But then I really, uh, that's a good question and I would love to research more about it and try and uh, understand why contemporary is more preferred than the rest. That's a good point that I'll not, yeah. Yeah. Like uh, where you have talked about the future aspect of Indian art that uh, it might be in a better place in the next 10 years. But what do you expect it to be exactly in what kind of a position do you expect the Indian art to be in the upcoming 10 years? I think we are definitely going to uh, go places for sure, right? And the value of Indian art is only going to go up. There's no doubt about it. So if anybody who is hearing this, I would tell you the art list is there. I'm sure some of the works of the artists who are in the art list, uh, they are not very expensive as well. Uh, mm -hmm. If you collect, I mean, we're talking about 50 people here, right? 50. Mm -hmm. And possibly another 20 gets added every year, 10 goes out. So we're talking about 70 people. You know, 70 artists, they are going to define India's art world over the next 10 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's interested in making money, you know, it's a good uh, destination for investment. So I really think Indian art is going to go places over the next 10 to 15 years. There's one more thing that mostly Indian parents uh, focus more on the science stream or the commerce stream more than art. And people usually, because of that, there must be many people out there who wanted to do art or who wanted to paint throughout their life, but they could not do because of the stereotypical uh, view of people, right? So do you think that is something which is affecting the art market? Absolutely, absolutely. I think so too. Uh, and uh, more focus has to be given, given in terms of art education, uh, mm -hmm. for sure, you know. Uh, just to, uh, we're all, uh, we're all going to face a very high uh, influence of artificial intelligence and, you know, a mm -hmm. computerization of work. Yeah, yeah. So what we will see now is most of the work that is there, uh, it is going to be outdated. You know, I'll just tell you, uh, there's, a, there's an interesting forward that is going around in WhatsApp. Uh, which I'll let you share this thing up. Uh, so there is this bridge in the US, uh, which was constructed of, I think, so many years back. And uh, so Charlotte Bridge, something like that, okay? And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Japanese engineers really worked on it. And uh, it was a difficult bridge to build, and there was water and all under it. And you know, and they built a bridge. Then I think a few years later, a major flood and a disaster uh, hit that region. I think it's in Texas, if I'm not wrong. Okay, but hit that region. Then what happened was the flood and the the, the uh, cyclone was so bad that uh, uh, the entire town got destroyed. But then nothing happened with the bridge. Okay, mm -hmm. nothing happened in the bridge, uh, but the only problem that happened was the water under the bridge also got shifted away. Mm -hmm. So the bridge is literally standing, so either side of the bridge is broken, but the bridge is literally standing on the land. Right, if you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. So that is how it is going to be, so the bridge literally become useless. So what is, what is happening now, there is a mad rush of people to learn uh, technology and you know new skills and all that stuff, right? Yeah. But the uh, similarly, so one of the things that will happen is the water is definitely going to shift away from the bridge, right? And you know, the bridge might become useless. All the skills that you have might become useless. <clears throat> but what what are those things that will continuously stay? Come what may, whatever happens. I mean, art is one such thing, right? Art mm -hmm. is definitely, it doesn't matter if it's a cyclone or a corona or whatever, right? Yeah. If there is something that we can predict of in 10, 15 years from now, it's an association for the good work of art. 
Mm. And no AI can replace that. Right? Yeah. It's a human, concerned with human feelings and human emotions. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very yeah. important that the parents, uh, right from the beginning of their uh, the children's education, it's very important that we speak about art, we speak about uh, encouraging the kids to be uh, more educated than art, more get involved in art. Uh, so I'm, I'm in India, uh, as far as I've seen, from wherever I study, and you know, where I see my kids going to, uh, we are not there yet, and it's very pro science and uh, pro, you know, uh, uh, what the world calls good right now is what being taught. And we have to, uh, educating about art is preparing your kids for future. And that has to be done. Yeah, very true. Even I hope that the situation get better in your future and more and more people are being encouraged to take up even art stream. So, yeah. I, when I heard you speak, I just, I'm uh, thinking, that this kind of a job is really interesting and it is a very unique job. Like uh, yeah. analyzing market of art. It is a very unique thing. So how did you land up in such kind of a job? Being the managing director for Huron India. Uh, so I think Huron uh, is a UK based organization uh, which started off talking about the, the success stories of Chinese entrepreneurs. I mean, that's how the Huron report started. Uh, so I am an Oxford graduate. I graduated in 2012. I okay. met the chairman of Foran and I wanted to do something in India, mm -hmm. right? And uh, that's when we started Foran in India. And I've been doing the risk list and research and all those things for so many years. And after it comes naturally, it's an evolution, right? Uh, you talk about uh, high net worth individuals, you talk about risk list, what is the next step? they can make investment and start promoting the culture of the country. So, so it's, a, it's a part of the holistic process of Indian entrepreneurs, you know, and letting them connect to the good artists. That's now what, how I started uh, writing about the uh, India art list. Uh, and then, you know, we, uh, and yeah, and this continued. And then and the results are very long term in the sense that I don't see any change happening even the next mm -hmm. couple of years. But then possibly from the third year from now, I can, I kind of predict that, you know, they, people will start looking at these, uh, these art lists seriously and start collecting based on the art list. Yeah. Yeah. So, Hurin is absolutely doing a great job. Lastly, I want to ask you, how do you think the artists in India can be kept motivated to pursue this more and more? And any kind of a suggestion or any such thing if you, uh, that you want to tell the audience that are listening to this podcast? Uh, I think I seriously would recommend each one of you to look at the artists who are listed in the India Atlas. I mean, yeah. that could be a great first step. Don't look at the prices and all. You know, these are all basically auction house pricing. I'm sure these guys have some of the work that are uh, not as expensive as well. And I would recommend you to collect this art. And then, and you will not be, uh, uh, this money will not go waste and they shall come in at much higher returns than where you can just like real estate or whatever. Uh, so I would suggest you to consider this kind of the art. Even if not on the top of the artist, I would uh, recommend you to look around, look for some great artists, start investing in some money. I mean, it's extremely important that uh, Indian art has to be subjected and marketed for Indian, you know, uh, for the growth of Indian uh, economy from a holistic perspective. Hmm. So if we do that, if we do our bit and start collecting some of these tools, I mean, it will have automatically a very positive impact on uh, the artists and the way they work. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Even if normal people like us start recognizing artists that are around there in India, yeah. that would that can be a very great motivation for them to keep on pursuing them. Yeah. yeah Absolutely. Cool. I mean, look at art, right? Art is not something that you buy and... Uh, People, if you can buy an amazing piece of art, you can put that in the wall. Uh, I mean, it's a great thing to see. You know, it's a great mm -hmm. delight for your eyes, and you know, it gives a lot of positive energy. It's like an interior designing uh, element. Even if you have a small house, uh, if you have a great piece of art in the house, I mean, the entire mm -hmm. house will look different. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, so art is amazing in that sense. I mean, we should definitely. Uh, start collecting at some point or the other and you know once we have this culture of collecting mm -hmm. uh, it will have a uh, trickle down impact on the artists and you know motivate further for them to start doing some interesting work yeah 
like people know other artists like singers and dancers people should also know painters as well you cannot keep a solo with them uh, at your home and you cannot just continuously uh, play a solo with them 24 bar seven but in piece of art it's there 24 bar seven yeah that is the level and the extent of uh, entertainment and you know enjoyment and the pleasure that an art gives compared to any other form of entertainment okay so it was pretty insightful it was amazing talking to you sir hope you liked our show you can give your valuable feedback and suggestion of speakers you would like us to host next by writing us on www.artdown.store stay tuned to our channel as we are going to come up with brand new episodes every week on friday don't forget to follow us on instagram facebook and spotify see you soon